The Eddington limit we talked about in this lesson can be very useful for many things apart from the study of classical novae. One thing it can give you is the minimum mass of giant black holes. Now we know there are quasars at the edge of the universe and some of the brightest quasars have luminosities that are a whopping 10 to the 15 times the luminosity of the sun. So 10 to the 15 times more luminous than the sun, that's still 10 to the 5 times brighter than an entire galaxy. These are very bright quasars. The luminosity of the sun, for reference, is 3.85 by 10 to the 26 watts. But these luminosities give us a problem. A quasar is thought to be a very massive black hole with gas falling into it. And the gas swirls around and its potential energy is converted into heat and radiates like crazy. But this means for a quasar to shine, we must be able to feed gas into it. But that's the problem. You've got this immense amount of radiation coming out. Won't this radiation just push the gas? So instead of falling in, it just turns around and comes back out again. If it does, the quasar would go out. There'd be no radiation because there'd be nothing to feed the black hole. So what this is telling us is we need some way to get gas to fall all the way in despite this incredible radiation coming out. And the main way to do this is by having a very, very massive black hole, a black hole that is over its Eddington limit. So massive that despite this incredible radiation pressure pushing out, the gas mass will still suck it in. So, we know the Eddington luminosity was given by the equation 4 pi g mass, in this case the black hole, mass for proton, times the speed of light, all divided by the Thomson cross-section. So we know the cross Thomson cross-section, 6.7 by 10 to the minus 29 square meters, we know g, um, we can rearrange this to guess the mass of the black hole, which comes out as the mass of the black hole. This is the minimum mass needed to overcome the radiation and still stuck stuff up. It could be much more than that. So it's, a, it's a, a lower limit on the mass of the black hole. It's going to be sigma Thompson, uh, the luminosity of the black hole, divided by 4 pi g, the mass of the proton, times the speed of light. And if you plug in numbers for that, that comes out as about 6 by 10 to the 40 kilograms, which is about 3 by 10 to the 10 times the mass of the sun. Extraordinarily heavy. So this age limit has allowed us to work out that the black hole in the middle of a distant galaxy that's producing the quasar must be absolutely massive, way more massive than the black hole in the middle of our own galaxy, the Milky Way, which is only a few by 10 to the 6 solar masses.